Hello everyone, at this part we are going to introduce uh, site survey knowledge and methods. And to do the site survey, firstly we should know the application requirements. For example, in a network, we have multiple STAs, right? And we should know the number of them. For example, how many STAs are used inside this coverage. And of course, the distribution of them. This is the first step. And then we should know the application type of these users. Because the traffic that applications will generate is different. For example, in this list, you can see uh, for some web applications, the traffic per user is around 512 kbps. And for some online games, it's about 40, or even for some uh, 3D online games, the traffic is a little more higher, which is from 80 to 130 kbps. Right? And for online music, for some uh, video services, the number is different. Right? So when we do the site survey, we should confirm the application types and the traffic that they would generate. And next, let's see the site survey process. First step is make four preparations, which will prepare some tours, right? We should confirm the environment, we should confirm the sites that we are gonna survey, and so on. And next, break down the target coverage scanner wheel. Perform detailed and uh, targeted tests efficiently. Select the area to be surveyed for AB installation. Test the signal strength surrounding channel usage by using some tools. Here the wireless moon and the arrow pack is advised. Right? And uh, evaluate the link stability by testing the throughput. Simulate the effect of multi-AP coverage. Record test point locations and the test data. This is about the process. And then for some indoor coverage projects, let's see what we should do. Firstly, we should confirm the penetrability. It's recommended that the STAs and APs are not separated by reinforced concrete wall or two or even more common brick walls, four or more glass walls, six or more wooden walls. And it's recommended that an AP be mounted on the ceiling at the compartment doorway when the AP needs to cover multiple compartments. And for the installation position, APs to be independently deployed are better placed at high positions. Pay attention here. High positions can ensure the down radiation, reduce blocking by obstacles, and minimize signal dead zones. And for the ceiling mounted antenna, a long connection distance between ceiling mounted antennas is not recommended. So here are some suggestions for the indoor coverage project. And let's see an example here. And as you can see here in this figure, it's a small enterprise network. And you can see we have office, we have meeting rooms, we have demo rooms, right, lobby, laboratory, and so on. And we if you use uh, APs to offer the network access. And if we only have one AP in this scenario, you can see the coverage is limited. For example, uh, this part, for example, for the lobby, for the uh, table cabinet, this kind of area are not covered at all. They cannot access the wireless network. So in this way, obviously one AP is not enough. So we should need to use multiple APs. You can see here we have three APs. And th they are using different channels. AP1 is using channel 1, AP2 using channel 6. AB3 is using channel 11. I think you are familiar with uh, these numbers. 
right? Because if we use channel 1, 6, and 11, they will not interfere each other. Right? And from this figure, we can also see that by using three APs, we can cover all the area, right? Okay, so it says that the whole space is covered in an overlapped manner and the capacity requirements of the space with many office areas and many users are met. Frequencies should be set appropriately for multiple APs in the same space. In this case, what we use is uh, channel 1, channel 6, channel 11, right? To reduce the interference in the area. Okay, this is also what we should do during the site survey stage. Right, to decide where to install the APs or the AP locations. Okay, and the next, let's see a um, case of the indoor test. You can see here, um, this is an AP. Right? We have already installed it. And uh, around this AP, we have multiple rooms. Right? We have multiple rooms. Room one, maybe two, three, and so on. And in this area, we have three test points. In this figure, you can see test point, this is test point one, test point two, test point three. And in this list, you can see some parameters that we have collected from these three test points. For the test point one, the pin is two milliseconds, right? And the packet loss rate is zero percent and the field strength is minus 60 dBm while the test point two actually the parameter is the CM test point three the field strength is different which is minus 69 right and we can compare the parameter between test point one and two since the test point two is longer away from the AP, why would the parameter is the same? So we can figure out that maybe since the test point one is inside the room and the signal should go through the walls here, should go through the walls. So we can also know that the walls will have an effect to the signals, right? And of course, the distance will also affect the strength of the signal. Okay, this is about the indoor test case. And the next, for the indoor coverage area, here it's used as some uh, classifications. First is by area radius. You can see we can divide them into less than 50 meters or greater than 50 meters. Right? And based on the user density, for example, if the user density is less than 30, we can think that this is a low density user coverage. While if it's greater than 30, we think it's a high density user coverage. And here is used some cases, for example, for the homes. First day, um, the area is small, right? It's um, less than 50 meters. And uh, it's a low density user coverage because in each home, maybe we only have maybe three or even five users. It's much less than 30, right? While for some stadiums, right, for some academic lecture halls, it's a large area and it's a high density user coverage. So based on different uh, classification of these areas, the size survey or the network design is difference. Okay, so when you do the site survey, you should figure out first day the carbon radius and then the user density of the area. Okay, and here it's used as some uh, network design scenarios. For example, here is a small meeting room. And let's see the requirement first. A company's Seating equipped meeting room is 50 meter long and 10 meter wide. Can accommodate 30 people at the same time. However, no more than 20 users can access the WLAN at the same time. 
So we can know that firstly it's a small meeting room and actually it's a low density coverage, right? So we can see here it's asked that how many APs are required. And we think that maybe one AP can satisfy this requirement. So we can use a wall mounted or the ceiling mounted APs in this scenario. Right? And we just need one. Why if the coverage is large? For example, here, a multimedia classroom of a school is 35 meter long and 20 meter wide. Can accommodate 150 people at the same time. No more than 100 users can access the WLAN at the same time. So in this scenario, how many APs right, we need? And we need, for example, if we need three APs, of course, it depends on which kind of VP you use, right? And uh, we assume that we need three APs, and at this time we should consider the channels to use because um, we should reduce interference, right? And if we have three APs, we can use channel one, six, and eleven to solve this problem. Okay, this is a multimedia classroom scenario, and next there are other types of WLAN coverage. For WLAN coverage of large, low density area, you can see here, it's large, but the density is low. Divide the entire large area into several small areas by certain principles, and then conduct planning according to the small area and the low density coverage rules. Consider channel insulation and the power adjustment between APs in the small areas. While well, for WLAN coverage of large high density area is another scenario. The coverage is large and the density is high. So we can refer to the small area and the high density coverage rules. Be sure to plan channels in a holistic manner by utilizing the cellular coverage technology, adjust the power based on on site condition during implementation to avoid interference between APs. So for these kind of large areas, no matter it's low density or high density, we can divide them into several smaller parts and then design the network. Okay, this is about the network types or coverage types. And then let's see the outdoor coverage. It's using us the design principle of the outdoor coverage. Firstly, consider signal interaction between an AP and a weighted SDAs to ensure that the weighted SDAs can access the network. For attendance selection, consider uniform signal distribution. For key areas and uh, signal conflict points, adjust the antenna azimuth and the uh, downtight angle. For antenna installation position, ensure that the main beam distribution of antennas right faces the target area to achieve a better coverage effect and uh, stagger the coverage disruptions of APs on the CM channel to prevent the core channel interference. For seal coverage, consider only the signal entering from doors and the windows as indoor signals that penetrate close to concrete wall from outside are basically unavailable. The last one, covered area should be as close to AP attendance as possible, and no barrier exists in direct sight. And for the outdoor, here is the test case. You can see this is a building. This is a building. And at the top of the building, this is the AP, and this is the antenna of the AP. Okay. And for this outdoor test case, we have set three test points. You can see test point one, test point two, and the test point three. The distance of them, test point one is 80 meters away from the building, while test point two is 100 meters. Test point three is 200 meters. And let's see the test result. For the test point one, the ping is 2.5 milliseconds. Packet loss rate is zero. 
and the field strength is minus 47. While for the test point two, even the distance is longer, it becomes 100 meters away, right? The pin is 3.5, while the packet loss is the same as zero, and the field strength is minus 45 to minus 50. And for the last test point, the pin is 4.8, and packet loss is zero, field strength is minus 50. So from the result here, we should know that during the set survey of the outdoor project, we should consider the absorption and attenuation of signals by trees in open environments. We should consider the interference of outdoor equipment with indoor devices. And the data of test point three here shows that the carbon radius of an outdoor AP is greater than 200 meters in open areas without shelters. Because at the point three, actually the result is um, acceptable to us, right? So even the distance is longer, even maybe up to 20, 250 meters, we can test again, right? To figure out if the uh, parameters is acceptable or not, right? Okay, this is about the outdoor test. And for the site survey here, let's make a summary. Firstly, we should uh, analyze the requirement, determine the user development goals, business volume, regional distribution of users by analyzing the current situation, development prospect, and uh, other aspects. Next is about the coverage goal setting, determine key coverage areas, hot spots based on requirement analyzed results. And the next is the preliminary site survey. Collect hotspots information and determine the coverage area of the hotspots. And the next, expansion course analyze. Collect information about the usage of existing hotspots to determine capacity expansion requirements. And next is uh, solution design. Determine the networking solution and device configuration based on the coverage, frequency, capacity plans, and so on. And the last step is adjustment and optimization. After we have installed the wireless network, we can maybe test it and find out is there any points that we should adjust or should be optimized. For example, optimize the AP and antenna layout according to the actual network quality evaluation to improve the network quality and performance. Okay, this is about the set survey knowledge and the methods. And at last, let's see a question. It's asking that which type of following application generates most traffic per user? A is online game, B, common online music, C, HD video service, D, chatting softwares. So which of them you think that will generate most traffic And actually, obviously, here we should see right, the HD video service will generate most traffic. Okay, so that's all for this part.